How's everyone doing? Welcome back to another weekly episode breakdown of Attack on Titan Season 4 and today we have episode 8 or 67 titled Assassin's Bullet which is quite the fitting title for what's about to happen in this episode. We continue from where we left off with Poco about to be eaten by Aaron and Reyna reluctantly waking up to fight against Aaron. Also, I realized that the past two episodes have been ending on Poco almost dying but only to be saved at the last minute which could be foreshadowing something happening to him in future episodes. It was kind of underwhelming too because Rainer doesn't really put up much of a fight and gets decked in the face by Aaron but he at least managed to save Poco repaying back his debt back in episode 1 while Mikasa and Aaron heads for the airship. When they reach the airship, Armin and Aaron exchange an awkward look with each other and you can see that he definitely has mixed feelings towards Aaron after dragging everyone into this mess. Aaron is then greeted by Levi who proceeds to kick him across the face which is definitely a reference to the trial back in season 1 where Levi had kicked Aaron too to prove that he could control him. But I think Levi can't really control Aaron anymore and it's interesting how both times it was also Armin who was the one to hold Mikasa back. Then Levi orders the scouts to restrain Aaron because it was his idea to attack Mali and he was the one that had dragged the scouts into this mess, knowing well that they would do anything it takes to get him back because the founding titan is their only insurance policy. Outside the ship, Jin and the others are protecting it from the remaining Mali soldiers but he soon orders all of them to get on because the enemies don't really have any means of taking them down considering the scouts had already took out all the heavy cannons from the previous episode. Also, it's great to see our main cast all made it out safely and I'm pretty sure Connie just said what most fans are always thinking. The other scouts who die don't really matter that much as long as the main cast members are still together. But we'll find out later that one of our beloved 104 Cadet Corps members is about to die. And here we also got to see how different Flotch is compared to the previous season from the one self-proclaimed coward to a full-blown fanatical Aldean nationalist who isn't afraid of killing innocent people or throwing children out of flying airships. Back on the ground, Gabby is still going after the scouts with Falco chasing behind trying to stop her. Falco manages to stop her but she starts talking about the same things that we had heard before like wanting revenge for killing her friends and of course her pre-existing hatred for the audience thanks to the brainwashing done by the Braun family. But we also learn another reason for her desire to seek revenge and that she had wanted to see a day where Aldeans could proudly wear those armbands but thanks to Aaron's actions, the Aldeans will never be able to get that respect ever again. Her drive for revenge again really serves as a good parallel to a young Aaron who had wanted revenge all those years ago. But it's clear that Falco isn't as narrow-minded as Gabby because after hearing what Aaron had said before, he understands the reasoning behind their attack on Mali and also that people are all the same whether it be on Mali or on Paradise. However, Gabby doesn't really care and continues on with her path of vengeance, still thinking that the Eldians on Paradise are devils and should be killed. Moving on, the remaining scouts finally got on the airship when Lobo notices Gabby coming from the alleyway and when he was about to shoot, he sees that Gabby is just a kid so he hesitates which is a big mistake. All I can say is that Gabby is really lucky because this is the second time that someone had spared her life just because she's a kid and the first one being Sasha when they first saw each other back in episode 6. Gabby kills Lobov and his body drops to the ground with the Odium gear still attached to the airship and she grabs the trigger, preparing to charge onto the airship filled with scouts. Falco is right and she's definitely stupid and I blame it all on Reyna's mother making Gabby think that she's a freaking super soldier. Coke shows up confused what the both of them are doing and Gabby uses the trigger pulling her towards the airship. Falco then remembers his promise to Rainer about protecting Gabby but given what he has done before, I'm pretty sure he would have done the same thing even without his promise to Rainer as he grabs on to follow his little crush onto the enemy airship. After making onto the airship, Gabby quickly takes a shot at our beloved potato girl Sasha and I found it quite ironic that the gun Gabby was using belonged to the security officer that Sasha had killed prior to this. While everyone was still in shock, Gabby was about to take another shot at Jin and if Falco didn't tackle her, she probably would have taken out Jin too and she's really lucky that Jin missed his shot. The rest of the scouts proceed to beat up the both of them and I kind of feel sorry for Falco because he was just there to make sure Gabby was safe but hell yeah, beat the shit out of Gabby because she definitely deserved it. 
As that was happening, Connie and Jean are desperate to try and save Sasha as she is slowly bleeding out but I do not like her chances of surviving. When Flosh suggested throwing Gabby and Falco out of the airship, you can tell that Jean actually contemplated about doing it but he isn't that kind of person and just wants this cycle of killing to end. Meanwhile, Margaret checks on Pig and she slowly recalls details about the tall soldier responsible for trapping her and Poco down inside the hole, who we later would find out her name is Yelena. Apparently, she was part of the missing survey ships that Zeke talked about before and we also see Oyakopon standing beside her in Pig's flashback, meaning that there is a possibility of more soldiers from the missing survey ships who had joined Paradise Island. Then we see Levi talking to Yelena while she peels off that terrible fake beard she had. In another room, Gabby is just going batshit crazy talking about the true audience cursing on their graves and how they will be carrying on Zeke's will which isn't something that a prisoner should be saying right now. And again we see how level headed Falco is and he asks Gabby to stop. Now we finally get the reveal of the mastermind behind the attack on Mali and it was Zeke Jaeger just like I had speculated in my previous episode breakdown. It's honestly some next level plot twist from Isayama. I never would have guessed that Zeke, the person who betrayed his own parents to the Malians, is now siding with Paradise Island. But then again, it was more or less hinted throughout the season. A good example would be when Zeke just outright said that Aaron Jaeger is not his enemy or a less subtle hint would be the baseball glove that Aaron had with him back in episode 4. It's clear that Zeke is a fan of baseball like when he decimated the scouts back in season 3 and he referenced terms used in baseball. Also, when Yelena was escorting Pig and Poco away, Zeke was the only one that was allowed to go on his own and now that Pig said that Yelena was one of Zeke's followers, it makes all the more sense. Also, Jean was clearly upset and angry at Yelena for failing to lock down the Cut and Jaw Titans which led to them losing 6 of their own men. It's also because of that Zeke had to throw a lot more rocks at the scouts than initially planned which wasn't really to the liking of Levi who called him a clown. Zeke obviously took it personally and sarcastically saying that he would piss his pants if Levi continues to glare at him with killing intent. I mean Levi is definitely holding off his urge to just kill Zeke right away because it's for the plan to save Aldea and it probably annoys him a lot too that his prey is just sitting there in front of him but he can't really kill him. When Zeke said that all their sacrifices will be worth it now that they have a person with royal blood and the founding titan together, I wonder what are the plans they have to free Aldea. Are they really considering unleashing the colossal titans inside the walls or are they planning something else? Then Connie enters and delivers the bad news that Sasha had died, pretty much cementing Gabby's place as one of the newest most hated characters of the series. I mean, it's hard not to hate Gabby because she literally killed off a character that we've known since the start of the series. We saw how she went from the quirky and stubborn girl we know to one of the bravest and most reliable members of the scouts. Then seeing Amin and Mikasa's reaction really hits you right in the feels and Jin piles on the guilt for Eren and points out it was his fault which is technically correct. If he had stayed put on Paradise and not gone rogue, all of this death could have easily been avoided. Of course Aaron is hurt by this as we see him let out the laugh filled with pain when he hears that Sasha's last words were meat which reminded him of the moment when she had stolen a piece of meat from the officer's room and he went from laughing to complete remorse knowing that he was the one that had caused this. Also I'm not trying to give Aaron the benefit of the doubt but there's a possibility that Zeke might be manipulating Aaron with his royal blood and he isn't really doing all of this on his own free will but that's just a theory I have on why Aaron is so different from the previous seasons. That's pretty much it for the episode and it was such a roller coaster ride of emotions. It's definitely a more solemn episode because we lost everyone's favorite potato girl and I can't believe Isayama cut Levi from fulfilling his promise with Erwin again. So what are your thoughts on the episode? Did you enjoy it or hated it? Were you expecting Zeke to betray Mali and what was your reaction to Gabby killing Sasha? I would love to hear your opinions down below. Next episode will have us returning to Paradise Island while everyone mourns over Sasha and we will likely be learning about some of the Malians that had joined Paradise. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like because it does help a lot and subscribe for more future content. Check out these other cool videos too. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.